Hello everyone and welcome back to the next episode in this series. In this episode we'll be going over how to add a C++ interface to be able to interact with different objects and how to add um, another interface on how to use the items in our inventory. So the uh, objective of this tutorial episode is two interfaces. Let's begin. Go to tools, new C++ class, all the way down to the bottom and you have Unreal interface. Click on this, go to the next, and we want a interact interface. And make sure this is going into the plugin, and we'll put this into a inter into an interfaces folder. Make it public and create the class. Okay, we don't need the C header. Sorry, we don't need the C file. We only need the header for this. Uh, ignore this bit at the top. We don't need that for what we're doing. Go into the I interact interface portion and just type in new function blueprint native event. Now it's important that it is a blueprint native event, otherwise it won't work at all. And it needs to be blueprint callable as well. We can't use blueprint pure for this. It needs to be both native event and callable in blueprint. So we may avoid interact with a you interact component base as our interactor. Okay. And that is pretty much it. Let's go to our interaction component base here. And instead of saying, does the actor have to take interact call? We're going to say if the interactable object that we cached just on the line above it, if it implements our interface. And of course, we need to include our interface as a header file in our component C++. And if it does implement it, then we do all this stuff. So we now uh, interact first, and now we come to our interact function down here. We now do another check to see if it's valid and it implements the interact interface, then we just call it like this. Now it's very important that you call it like this, that you get the static um, interface like this and then in execute underscore and the name of the function. Now you might see that um, there's two parameters being passed and two arguments rather and we've only got one here. Now the reason for this is, as you can probably tell, the first argument being passed in is the object that we were trying to target with the interface call. Okay, um, and now, yeah, we just, yeah, now we can uh, implement that interface in any act that we need or any object that we need and we can do it like that. Now the reason why we done it with objects rather than actors is because it opens up a wider range of opportunities for us to use it in and yeah there's no real harm in doing it with objects rather than actors it just makes it more extendable and scalable so let's add our next interface go to tools up here again new C++ class scroll down to the bottom there we go and I'm going to type in inventory item interface and this is the plugin, nice. So interfaces, public, great. And now if we go back to here, we have that interface now, and we need, for now, just I think it's four functions. So let's start off with our um, what was it? Yeah, that was it. Tool can be added to inventory. New function, different native event can be removed from inventory and boolean can be used. 
And finally, we'll add in one last function here. Which is going to be an int 32 to get max stack size. Perfect. And actually, we can add one more in. And just underneath can be used. Uh, which is going to return a void on use. And there we go. That's our inventory item interface. Now, we expect that every item that we're going to enter into our inventory is going to use this interface. So what we can do is if we come back to our inventory component base, if we go to our add item implementation, um, if we have authority, then what we can do after this point is we can check if the item implements the interface that we need it to. There we go. Now we could add it here as well, but uh, yeah, actually, why not? Why not? If uh, once it is less than or equal to zero, then return false. If uh, item is not valid. Then return false if um, item does not implement that. Then return false. You can actually just set that here. And therefore, we just return false every time. And then finally, we can check on the server if, uh, since we now know at this point that the item implements the interface, we can do inventory item interface execute can be added to the inventory on the item. So if this returns false, then we can't add it. If it does return true, then we can. And since we're on the authority, we know that whatever we choose, it's well, on the authority, we can do what we need to do here. And I'm just glad that we added these in now, because these are some quite valid checks that we need to run before doing anything. Really. Okay, so that's adding an item. Now let's do the same with using an item. So let's actually just copy and paste all this stuff that we just did. And place it here. Now we can go with the remaining amount. And it can be used. Perfect. Okay. And same thing here. If uh, we can't actually do those checks here, we can only check the quantity there. We'll have to do that in the blueprint. Uh, da, 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 da. What we could do as well, just what we're here, is new function blueprint native event, blueprint pure, and we can get new object um, get item index. And then just generate. And now we should, we can do this. So. Um, new object item equals that, and then we check all this stuff. If it's if there's no item at that index, then we return false. If it doesn't implement that, we return false. If da da da, perfect. And now we can also check if it can be used. Spectacular. And we can add const there just to make a tiny bit more sense of what we're trying to do there. And let's finally go to our removal methods and do the same thing there. So remove item. So right down there. Copy it. And execute can be removed from inventory. And then go down to the remove item index, do the same thing. And const 
new object, pointer, item is equal to get item index. And check if it can be removed. And there we go, perfect. In our use item implementation as well, what we should really do is uh, item index. Should we implement the things there or in blueprint? Let's do it in the blueprint version. Let's go back to our editor. Let's save everything and rerun it. Just opening up again. Okay, so let's go back to our inventory component. Uh, where is it? Controller, inventory, edit, and let's. Just quickly go for right get item index and get copy, get that index and then break it and get the item. Now if we go to our use function type use item and now call uh, on use, which should be a interface message like this. And do the same with our item index. Perfect. Well, save, and now let's make our first item object. I'm just going to actually take one of these cubes and I'm going to convert this into a glass. I'm going to call it test item. Select. And now we have this. Let's go to our event graph, class settings, and search for interact interface and also inventory item interface. Now we have these two. Interact is going to get an interact component, get um, component by class. Sorry, no, you need to get the owner. Not the owner, well, just get the owner. And from here, get component by class. And we are going to get the inventory component base and add item. The item that we want to add is this. Quantity is one. And if we succeed, then I want to remove this item from the world, so destroy actor. This bit's optional, you don't need to do that. Now, actually thinking about it, if we destroy the actor, when we use it, what's the pointer in the inventory going to point to? It's not going to point to anything, is it? So, let's not destroy the actor for now, because this is a good um, segue into the and the usage of the U object base that we talked about in the system design episode, which we'll be going into next time. Okay, so I just set the default values for a lot of the um, interface functions. So now let's go and test that this all works. Let's get rid of these two cubes. 
Press end and it should snap to the floor. Hold alt and it will duplicate for you whenever you move them. And let's play. So we should now, when we reach up here, press F, interact with our test item. There. So, why isn't it working with this? Let's add a breakpoint here and go back to our interaction component kind of base to make sure that it's all supposed to work the way it should. Interaction component kind of base. Interacting with item. So, depend interact. Okay, I get it. Okay, so right click on event interact, add call to parent function, and make sure to get this up. I'll save, come back here. There we go. Perfect. Now, let's add it in a way for us to use these items. So go to the first person controller again, debug key. I'm going to go with one. Inventory component, attempt, sorry, use item at index, press, and we're going to go for index zero and quantity of one. I'll save, come back out. So have to add test one to use. Using test item, used one test item, perfect. And it didn't remove it from the inventory. Why not? Well, let's have a look. Move item add because it's not connected up here. So let's get this connected up there and want to remove a quantity of what we passed through there. So let's compile save. So we should. Uh, let's add two items and then or three. So we have like that, and then we should have that, and then zero, and then this should maintain that one item in that one slot. Which is this. Nice. Now we don't get anything printed out because, well, we didn't use anything. We don't have any login for that. We'll set that up in a minute. This tutorial's ending a little bit earlier than expected. Um, So if we interact with this again, what we should get is a stack of two items and the first slot should remain free. So let's test it out. And it happens. Perfect. Okay, so let's go over something real quick. If we uh, right click on test item and go to something called the size map, you can see here that the size of the whole uh, blueprint is actually quite small, about 100 kilobytes. And what does that include? It includes the blueprint itself, it includes a reference to the static mesh and all its materials. So when you load up this item for play, or when you add it to an inventory and cast to it, that's what's loaded up. So let's have a look at something that should be considerably bigger, which is our inventory component. Let's see how big this is. It's 150 megabytes. But as you can see, the majority of it has been taken up by the first person character um, blueprint. Now, why is the inventory component loading all this up when it's added? Let's take a look at it. Let's go to our event graph, and as you can see here, we're adding a hard reference to it here. If we were to drag this out and promote it to a variable called item, and then connect that up instead, it should not make a difference at all to our size map. If we can pass save, size map. Nope, but it should make a difference if we convert this to a soft object reference. And resolve. To, from a soft object to a hard reference. I'll save and then go to the size map, it's dramatically reduced to under a single megabyte. Now why is this important? As I previously mentioned briefly, that when you cast to an object, especially in Blueprint, that that entire actor 
everything that references with a hard reference with the blue object reference, everything that that references with its loaded up as well, and everything those reference with it, it nests very, very quickly as you previously saw. If I had a reference to a um, player controller in there as well, that would all be loaded up as well. If I had references to UI stuff, that would all be loaded up, and if those UI had references to other stuff, it nests very, very quickly, which is why we use soft object references. And that's going to dramatically reduce the size of each um, component here. If we go to the content drawer and check on the interaction component, let's have a look. It's less than 50 kilobytes big, even 40 kilobytes big, it's tiny. So, this is another reason why we use interfaces rather than calling hard references, because every time that you cast to an, op to an object, to an actor, whatever, you're loading that entire actor into play if it's not already. Now normally it's fine, but casting is not inherently bad, it's not inherently a bad choice. What is usually though, are all these hard references that nest and connect to each other, because eventually you can get to a point where if you try to cast the first person character, it references something in the level which loads something in that level into memory which then loads the boss into memory and it just cascades very quickly depending on how you set things up is very very bad. I've worked on some of my projects in the early days especially the beginning where if I go back and look at the size map for those the player character despite being the default mannequin with very basic logic is a couple of gigabytes big. Gigabytes, not megabytes, gigabytes. Please just don't reference stuff that much. Use hard reference, use soft references when you can. And yeah, it's going to make things a bit more complicated for loading stuff in and out. But yeah, it should be fine. Just try to avoid refer hard referencing stuff as much as you can, especially in Blueprint. In C++, I'm not entirely sure on the get there. But the other thing is, it's just a lot easier to work with interfaces rather than hard references. Because I can easily add more items, types like this. Um, I could easily add an interaction uh, function on, say, an NPC to start dialogue. I could add interaction onto a door to open it. I could add it to various number of things. But if I made each of those a um, had an actor base that implemented that one function, rather than using an interface, it would make my life a lot harder. Because, well, for one thing, a door and an item will need a static mesh, but a, um, an NPC will probably use a skeletal mesh, and they're not going to share colliders because the door is going to use a uh, box collider. A item could use a capsule, a box, or a sphere collider, and the NPC is going to use a capsule collider. So there's nothing shared across these except for the functions, which is where interfaces absolutely shine in how they're used. Now, I've forgotten what I was going to say I was going to do after I wrapped up this tutorial. Um, it might have been the item objects, but I'm going to do that in the next episode. So we have that and that. Okay, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, leave some feedback for me down in the comments below. Uh, any feedback is welcome. If there's any bugs or if anyone's got any issues with the code, then of course leave them down there as well. I'll be coming up with an addendum series after all the episodes have been released so that um, I can address some common issues, common bugs, um, and just answer people's questions about the system as well. Um, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Bye.